What I wish to demonstrate now is uh, another method of uh, detecting varroa in a hive and it's called drone uncapping. So I've got this fork uh, for sticking into the drone and pulling out the pupae. We'll just demonstrate that. What we've done here is remove the honey super and the queen excluder to gain access to the brood area where the uh, drone brood will be. Of course this can only ever be done when you've got drone brood uh, active in a hive and that's seasonal and that'll vary from location to location. So shake all the bees off a brood comb where you've got a lot of drone it's developing and get your fork and we can slip under the drone brood like this skewering the, uh, the drones. In this case the drones aren't developed enough to be lifted out. What we're after is pink eyed drones not the larval stage. You know, a couple of a drone came out then. You can actually remove, get a pair of tweezers and remove this developing drone. There's one there. So now I've removed um, suitable pupae. They're still white with dark eyes. The uh, developing varroa will stand out very clearly on the pupae. Uh, we can also look into the bottom of the cells just to see if there's any other varroa in the bottom of the cells. Why this particular method and why drones? Well drones are 8 to 10 times more attractive for female varroa mites to go into to lay their eggs than worker cells. So whenever you've got a lot of drone brood being raised in a hive, you're going to have a lot of varroa in those drones breeding. That's where they prefer to lay. So that's why this particular method can be effective when there's a lot of drone brood in a hive to test. But as you can see it's fairly fatal for the drones, but that's the way it is.